Veronica Mars returns for season four. So Hulu decides to reboot or revamp Veronica Mars for a season four. Now, I know Veronica Mars, I grew up with it when it was, I think it was the late 90s or early 2000s when it was on TV. I never really watched religiously. Like if I caught an episode, I was in. But other than that, like I don't know what went on or the intricacies of the stories from back then. And I could have swore it was more than three seasons, but whatever. But yeah, Hulu decides to revamp it for a fourth season. And um, I only saw the advertisement probably like a week before they actually put it on there. And I was happy when I saw it that they had all the episodes on there. They didn't give us the regular one or two episodes and string us along every week. So I was happy that I could binge it. Um, so yeah, I started watching it. I literally watched it started while I was at the gym at like five o'clock and then by the end of the night like I was done and I was pleasantly surprised I liked it um I thought they did a good job with it um so I mean it was somewhat predictable but it wasn't like that predictable too far away from the big reveal like you can tell who the the killer or the person was or the bad guy at the beginning it was like leading up to it like with each episode you get more and more clues and you're like wait it could be this guy but then you're like no maybe this guy and it's like oh it was this guy that I original you know but me I, I I figured out who it was like from the second he walked on the screen because it's a certain way that and I don't know if they do this on purpose like filmmakers the way they film like the bad guys it's how do I explain it it's kind of in a way where you're like well damn they're annoyed it's they show the annoyance of the bad guy they show like they kind of try to explain the feelings behind them being a bad guy if that makes sense so basically Spence which uh, Patton as Oswald from uh, King of Queens was a bad guy so if you ha I mean spoiler I know it's late <laughs> but yeah I'm sure everybody's already seen it but he turned out to be the bad guy but he wasn't the bad guy from the jump he was the secondary bad guy which I don't know I've never seen him in a bad guy role and I think he did a great job because he's usually like the goofy sidekick type person and I really think he really did a great job in all the clues but the ending like it messed me up real bad um, but yeah that's the one thing that I would change is the ending because it was just heart-wrenching um, but yeah, I do hope they come back for a fifth season, if which it's set up to like be an ending, but I do hope they come back with a fifth season. And I rarely say this because shows usually disappoint me, but this one, you know, it was slow moving um, and it led up to whatever. It was only eight episodes, so it didn't drag on. Um, and like I said, I think they did a good idea and I hope they come back for another season, but... It doesn't look like they will um, all in all I liked it I would give it a two and a half because of all the the clues and like the mysteries and, and that you have to really think to figure stuff out with this movie not movie with the show so I, I like the mis the mystery part of it the heartbreak like I know I always say you know I want a more realistic ending and stuff like that with the shows and the movies and this one was was a little too much for me I don't think I could handle it so but I was glad to see that they weren't like a cookie cutter regular happily ever after ending you know so I was hap not happy I was glad that they didn't follow like the normal cookie cutter stuff and just kind of you know pulled on our heartstrings a little bit 
so yeah i do recommend it like definitely check it out it's bingeable um it's only eight hours each episode like 45 minutes so you can wax it off in like nine hours like if you have a lazy saturday or sunday this is like the perfect show to binge or to um, relax and watch